and welcome to For the Love of Nature, a podcast where we tell you everything you want to know about nature and probably more than you wanted to know. I'm Laura, and tonight there is no Katie. Since Katie's been out of town with family and I've been drowning in schoolwork, adult responsibilities, and babies not, we decided to give ourselves a break and do our own mini this week. So for those of you that have been listening to this podcast from the beginning, you've heard bits and pieces of Katie and I's journey as friends of the years. By now, you've probably realized that we are a couple of odd ducks, though we usually relish the weird and wacky things that we get into or fall into. I wanted to highlight a couple of our moments together so you can get to know us and understand our friendship a little bit better. Here we go. Katie and I's journey starts at Malone College, now Malone University, in 2008 when we met on a canoeing trip. So when I went to Malone as an undergrad in 2008, Katie had already been there for a year since she's a year older than me. And she was one of the leaders of the outdoor club. And so as an incoming freshman, we had the opportunity to sign up for some things before the school year even started, like the week before classes. And so I had signed up to do this outdoor canoeing adventure. I didn't know anyone going on it, but I was like, hey, these are probably my people. I wanted to be outdoors and do some cool stuff. Katie and a whole bunch of other students went along and we went canoeing in western Pennsylvania, which wasn't too far from school. And it was quite the adventure. And we got to meet one another, do some camping, navigate the relationships we were making between one another. And so that was my first experience with Katie. And I was like, oh, she's probably pretty cool being a leader in this group and everything. But we didn't really become like instantly friends then, but we knew we'd be running into one another since we were in the same major, which was zoo biology. So once classes had started, I had tested out of my undergraduate beginner biology courses, so I jumped directly into the sophomore level classes. So I joined in with Katie and all the students in her grade level. And thankfully, Katie, being the cool person she was, allowed me to join her and her circle of friends both in classes and outside of classes. And that's really how the friendship started. We spent a lot of time together in class and outside of class, although the time spent outside of class was a lot of studying and getting ready for classes and things. We did hang out and watch movies and sometimes go on hikes together. I remember one time we went to a really fun corn maze with friends. We, you know, agonized over the evils of math and chemistry and uh, studying for tests, things like that. Speaking of classes, we bonded a lot in herpetology and ornithology. Herpetology is the study of reptiles and amphibians and ornithology is the study of birds. So Katie and I were in those classes together and we had both lectures and labs. And the labs were by far the best part because they were just trips to go look at those things in a practical sense. So herpetology was just tramping off into the woods with our professor and classmates, flipping over rocks and logs, hoping to find cool salamanders or snakes and things like that. So that was a super, super fun. Ornithology was also really fun in a very different way. The professor is a very different person. When we went on lots of van trips, just driving around trying to find cool places to go birding, I'll never forget. It was a class that I can't remember if it was like the fall semester, so it would be the end of the semester when it was winter, or if it was a spring semester, which is what I think that it was, and it, you know, started in the winter. But going to school in Ohio, not that far from Lake Erie, there was a lot of snow and ice and being cold. And we went up to Lake Erie to go look at ducks because honestly, that was what seemed like the only bird around, at least when we started these labs. We drove up to Lake Erie and Katie and I were sitting in the back of this 15 passenger van and the professor is backing into this parking spot and we're looking out the back window as Lake Erie slowly approaches and we're like, whoa, 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 whoa. And that was the day that we thought we were all going to drown in Lake Erie because our professor was just going to back us right in. And another time we were driving and all chit-chatting, you know, like occasionally looking out the window, but there was really nothing going around. Um, this, so this must've been spring semester because of this story. When all of a sudden, the professor slams on the brakes and all of us fly out of our seats. And we're all like, what, what, what? Expecting, you know, to see something crazy like a great horned owl riding on the back of a bald eagle. But no, our professor said, it's the first robin of spring. And we're all like, that was probably my first interaction with uh, a zealous birder, shall we say. But no, it was so much fun. And we really did love the professor. And Katie and I even went after the semester was over, after school was over. We hung around for an extra week or two, and we went with that professor and his daughter up to McGee Marsh, which 
is up by Sandusky in Ohio, and it's a point where it's one of the shortest points in the Great Lakes, so the migrating birds can easily hop from Ohio to Canada without having to cross very much water, and it's like a funnel for warblers. It was incredible. We went, and it was like jewels everywhere in the trees, totally nerding out over all of these birds. Such a fun, cool experience. So that was college, the place where we found each other and also so much net. Well, so we parted rays there. We checked in with each other over the next several years. And fast forward a few, and we have a new conversation about coming down to Little Rock. I honestly can't remember which came first. If I said something like, I'm looking for a job, or Katie was like, oh, hey, um, I think I have one for you. But basically was like, hey, if you want to come down here to the Little Rock Zoo, there's a position here if you're interested. And it was going to be more money and more hours than what I was currently making. And it's not like I did, you know, I knew Katie and I was like, all right, cool. This sounds like a great adventure. And so I came on down. So that's how we ended up working together um, at the Little Rock Zoo. And no joke, guys, my first week there was, to say the least, I had never been that far west in my life and I had never lived in the south and I mean I had traveled a little bit in the south like in Tennessee and like one time we went down to Florida but you know nothing extensive so when I went there it was one it was an awareness week at the zoo so at the zoo or at lots of different zoos they do awareness days or awareness weeks that brings attention to some specific species or grouping of animals and it was bear week at the zoo so we had set up like this area with bear biofacts like skins pelts skulls things like that and we just had to man that area answer questions and just do some interpretation you know just standing there this is literally like my first or second day and I'm just being introduced to the people of Arkansas, and I am trying so hard to keep a straight face at the accents, because everyone has very different accents in Little Rock. Some people have no accent at all, and then some people have a really thick accent. And so I'll never forget, this one little boy came up to the table, and, you know, he was touching the bear fur, and they're about to leave the table, and his mom nudges him, because he hadn't said anything, so she nudges him hard and looks at him and us expectantly. And the little boy who is wearing, you know, he's little and he's wearing those cute little strap-on glasses. And he goes, thank you for letting me touch your beer pelt. And I almost lost it right there. Thankfully, I think I lost it right after he left. But Katie and I are both laughing and Katie's like, you gotta hold it together because, you know, it's this is gonna be constant. And I was just like, but he's so cute. (laughs) And uh, so that was kind of, you know, our first week. There was a lot of other weirdness of Bear Week, which I'm sure we'll mention again in the future. But, you know, it was just constant jokes and laughing there. It was an incredibly stressful job in some ways because there was a lot to do with not a lot of people to do it. You know, we had just a lot of different hats to wear and accreditation concerns and all sorts of things. But being the friends that we are and the people that we are with our personalities, we made it really fun. And I, to this day, every job that I've ever worked that has been stressful, that's where I've made some of the longest lasting friendships. And this was no exception. Katie and I had an office or, uh, you know, a trailer behind the education building. And it was where just the two of us were until some new staff joined us later. But at the beginning, it was just the two of us. We had our computers back there, and we had the graphics machine back there, and we just did a lot of collaboration and a lot of brainstorming. And that's kind of where you'll see, you know, when Katie and I are talking and when we plan these episodes and when we find our topics and just the way we talk with one another, it's no different than if you just overheard a normal conversation with us. So we're definitely like idea people. We're really good at collaboration. So Katie might be like, okay, we need to think of a program. Here's the topic. And then I'll be like, okay, well, what about this? And then she'll say, you know, yay or nay, or be like, okay, yes, and. And then I'll be like, okay, great, also. And so we just kind of build and feed off one another's excitement. And that's how it would be whenever we planned anything. So our events, our programs, Our signage even was just always, okay, cool, but can it be better or can it be bigger or can it be more exciting? Um, We had just had a lot of fun with our jobs because essentially that's what educators are, are just, you know, guides to having fun. 
So when we weren't working, like on our lunch breaks, we had games and movie times or jam sessions where we would just play instruments, play around with auto-tune, watch some movies on the laptop, have like board game times where the other educators or education keepers would come and join us, sometimes even workout sessions. So, you know, when we were off the clock, we hung out together. And then when we were on the clock, we were working and laughing. Sometimes we would laugh until we were in tears. Um, Not surprising. You know, you guys, if anybody has listened to our previous episodes, that happens a lot. I'm pretty quick to laugh and Katie is too. And I'm pretty easy to get started. So for example, one time, I don't even know what she did, but I was making a phone call to somebody. Like, someone who had called the office and I need to return their phone call. I don't know what it was about, some kind of program. And she did something ridiculous, literally as the phone is ringing. And I had two choices. My choices were let it keep ringing and get it together or hang up the phone. Okay. And I took option C, which was to not hang up the phone and not get it together. (laughs) So thank goodness they didn't answer the phone in person. So I am like desperately trying to hold it together. Katie's literally covering her mouth to try and help me stop laughing. And the message machine comes on and I'm leaving a message and my voice is like, because I'm trying so hard not to laugh. Thank you. I'm just returning your call. And I got through it and immediately hung up. I was like, I have no idea what that person ever thought. I don't even know if they ever called back, but it was absolutely ridiculous. And another time that something very similar happened was Katie and I, we had to write this, we had to write this giant program every year, which was basically an auditorium show for our staff and using the birds of prey. And every year it was big and crazy and we tried to do different themes. And so the one year that Katie and I did it together, because the first year she was on maternity, we wrote this skit with Jake the puppet because we were talking about what our talents were. And I don't know how it came up, but Katie was like, well, I used to do puppeteering because of course she did. So we wrote in a puppet who was the main character of this entire skit. So Katie's under this box you know, Manning Jake, and I'm under the box too because I'm the narrator, so you don't see me the entire time during this show either. So Jake's just up there interacting with our educators and things. So we do this for a whole week, and then we have a culminating performance at the resort that hired us, the state park. So it's been a long week. We're all tired, pretty slap happy, last performance. We've done this like at least, oh, I don't know, 15 times it feels like. Maybe not that many, but close. So one of the educators up top says something to Jake and Jake, aka Katie, reacts in such a funny way. I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish I remembered what Jake said, but it was just something so matter of fact, like, oh, really? And it sounded so funny. And, you know, the audience is laughing. I'm cracking up underneath. I don't know why it hit me so funny. I think I must have been tired. But I could also hear the educator outside the box, like, pause and also try not to laugh, which set me off even more. And then it's about to be my line. Katie is like, Laura, Laura, you know, under her breath. I am shaking. I am, tears are running out my eyes. I am trying so hard to get it together. And I just can't. Every time I think about getting serious, I just keep laughing. And so the narrator's voice comes out all shaky like it did on that phone message where it was something like, oh, yes, Jake, just (laughs) all shaky. Oh my gosh, dead, just dead. So yeah, that, I mean, experiences like that kind of sum up our working relationship with one another. Lots of laughs, although lots of mistakes, blunders, stress, but thank goodness we made it through. Um, Usually with a smile, or at least, you know, we knew we had each other's backs, we knew we could make each other laugh, and we knew we were doing good work that we could be proud of. One last story from Little Rock is not that long before both of us left. The South doesn't have, well, at least in in Arkansas, there was like no ice cream places. And Katie and I, who are both from Pennsylvania, there's ice cream places everywhere because this is dairy country. So going to a place where there was like no Dairy Queens was unheard of. There was Sonic everywhere. You couldn't hit, throw a rock without hitting a Sonic. But ice cream places like Dairy Queen, no. Well, finally, I think it was like 
around the new year, Dairy Queen was being built in Little Rock and they had a promotion that if you were like one of the first 50 people to buy a Blizzard cake, you would get a Blizzard card where basically you got one free mini Blizzard a week for a year. And I was like, oh, heck yes. So I talked Katie into going halfsies with me. So she gave me half the money for the cake. I stood in line for like two hours to get this cake so that we could get the card. And so we had joint custody of a Dairy Queen Blizzard card that we passed back and forth for at least six months until we both left and then we passed it on to a coworker. Yep, Dairy Queen joint custody, co-parents of blizzards. So yeah, then we both left Little Rock, did our own thing again for a couple of years, and then fast forward to 2020, you know, when we're all looking for something to help get us through day to day, we started talking a lot more. And of course, even when we were still working in Little Rock, we were like, you know what? We're pretty funny. <laughs> and, or at least people told us that we were. And we were like, you know, we should have a podcast. I think people would listen to us talk. And, you know, but it, it was all just talk. And finally, though, in 2020, it got brought up again. We're like, you know what? We should have a podcast. And now we actually have time for it. And then I was like, you know what? Seriously, though, Katie, I would do it. Like, I'll do it if you want to do it. And usually, Katie is the hype person. That's her role in all of this. Katie comes up with the crazy plans. And I'm just like jumping on that crazy Katie train and helping <laughs> keep the hype going. But this time I, it wasn't my idea, but I was like, yes, let's do it. And, uh, and that's all she wrote. You know, we've been doing this. We're now on, this is episode 77. We have been podcasting through a pandemic, through hard times in both of our lives, Katie's divorce and moving, me having a baby, which is of course wonderful, but also very hard, and grad school, both having full-time jobs, both having lots of other things in life, but really enjoying it. We've stuck with it for almost two years now, which is crazy. And we hope that, you know, you've enjoyed it and hopefully that this episode hasn't totally been a snooze fest for you. I know it's not super related to nature, but it's about Katie and I, and we hope that this eclectic episode has given you just a little more insight into Katie and I's friendship. Many of our listeners have commented on our great rapport with one another, and I think it's because of our shared history and our quirky, nerdy selves. And in general, our hope is that you, our listeners, feel that you are part of our community too. And, you know, we've said it before, the Nature Nerd Nation, NNN. -N -N. <laughs> so we always welcome you to have a laugh with us as we explore the many wonders nature has to offer. So to engage with us more and our community, chat with us on Twitter at FTLON and share an episode of ours with one of your close friends. That's all for this week. Thanks for listening and talk to you next week.